Hey everyone, it's Tim from Lanessa Farm Specialty and Heirloom Livestock. Thanks for joining us again today. As always, you can reach us online, check out our website, make sure you check out our YouTube videos for all of our other videos. We're going to be talking about a lot of topics today that have been covered in previous videos, so feel free to kind of peruse our channel, see what's out there, and watch some of these other videos that you may have not seen before. If you're new to the channel, thank you very much. This channel is focused on you and on educating you specifically about sheep and goats. There's no fluff on this channel, there's no advertisements. There's no sponsors, there's no nothing. It's just me and you and education about sheep and goats. So, you know, we've been talking to a lot of our customers this year and we've been seeing lots of repeat incidents occur. We've been seeing incidents occur regarding goat and lamb polio. We've seen hoof problems manifesting themselves and we've seen urinary calculi and we've seen gastrointestinal issues. And you know what, it all comes down to a lot of it mainly comes down to nutrition, but very specifically, a part about nutrition that I want to talk about is rumen health. Rumen is the fancy way of saying a sheep or goat's stomach. Now the rumen in all animals, including humans, has to maintain a certain pH level. And when I say pH, generally speaking, I'm talking about acid. Um, and it has to stay at a very specific um, amount, a very specific number. Um, in sheep and goats, that number is about six and a half. The pH number is six and a half. And that's kind of a, a number on a scale that tells us where it's at, if it's too acidic or too alkaline. Now you may be asking yourself, well, why does it matter if a lamb or a goat maintains a very specific pH? And that's a great question. And the answer to that is quite simple. Vitamin B12, sheep, goats, humans, all of us, we don't actually make the vitamin B12 that's in our body. The bacteria that we have in our gut, our gut microbes are what actually makes vitamin B12, believe it or not. And so we have to take extra special care to take care of those vitamin or to take care of those bacteria and keep them healthy so they can make that vitamin b12 for us if our stomach gets too or excuse me if the sheep and goats if their stomachs get too acidic that bacteria dies if it gets too alkaline that bacteria dies and other bacteria tends to take over we're not going to talk about uh, clostridium today but essentially that's what happens in clostridium that's what we all vaccinate our animals that cdnt that you give that clostridium and tetanus vaccination um, what happens in the case of clostridium is an animal overeats and they end up uh, having a flourishment of a bad bacteria that actually causes toxins to kill the animal. But we're not talking about that today. We're talking about our healthy room and our healthy gut bacteria that make vitamin B12. So let's head into the shop really quick, take a look at this on the uh, dry erase board and talk a little bit more about what this is and what we can do. All right, so here we are in the shop with the dry erase board again. And I know some of you hate the dry erase board with a passion. But that's just, you're just gonna have to get over it because this is a far better way of explaining things to everybody so they understand. But real quick, I just wanna talk about pH, uh, which is power of hydrogen. And I wanna kind of talk about it on a scale uh, of what is acidic and what is alkaline. Uh, so on this side, we have acid. And on this side is our alkaline. Um, and we're kind of aiming for somewhere in the middle. Now with people, uh, we're in the sevens. With sheep, we want to, the sheep rumen itself um, should be about 6.5. Um, should be what the pH level is in a rumen. And we have a little bit of wiggle room. Uh, we can go, we can go up uh, or down a little bit. We can go to I would say we're going to say about 7.4 and we can go down to about 5.5. So the farther we go down the scale, the lower pH gets, the more acidic it is. Um, and the higher a pH is, the more alkaline things tend to get. So again, you know, when we're talking about this uh, phenomenon of uh, rumen being at a very specific pH, um, it's very important. And the reason for that is, is this, this kind of Goldilocks area with our pH, 
This is where our beneficial bacteria can thrive. So this is our happy area where our rumen bacteria um, live and thrive. And that is why everything that we do needs to be focused on maintaining this pH level between uh, you know, that seven and a half to five and a half range. The closer we can get to that 6.5, the better. When we start to get out here and we start to get down here, this is our no-go area. And this is where bacteria um, will eventually, it'll actually kill them. Um, and so the bacteria then dies, uh, our, our functional bacteria dies, and then other bacteria starts to take over. So when it comes to sheep and goats, there's a few things that tend to keep us in this happy area. Um, and the sheep and goat are wired um, to help take care of their rumen and help keep their rumen in a very specific pH range. And the way that the sheep do that is through saliva production and, and cud chewing. Um, cud chewing produces saliva and saliva is a natural alkaline um, for the sheep. So sheep saliva is farther up in this area up here. When sheep eat a lot of grain um, and a lot of food, it drives that stomach acidity down here. And so there's this constant push and pull between the two. Sheep and goats eat food that makes their rumen very acidic, and then they chew it, and through the chewing process, they produce saliva. And so that saliva tends to pull that pH back up, um, and the food tends to pull that pH back down, and we end up with this happy medium somewhere in the middle. But here's what happens. Here's what goes wrong. There's numerous things that can screw this pH up. So let's say um, I don't give my animals enough water. No water. What's going to happen in the case of not enough water? Well, we said that when the animals eat food, it tends to make their rumen more acidic. Um, and we also said that through production of saliva, we were able to kind of buffer that uh, pH and help get it where it needs to be. When we don't have enough water production, we don't get enough saliva. And if we don't get enough saliva, then we get acidic. And when we get acidic, then we end up killing bacteria. And then we run into that whole vitamin B issue that we talked about before. Uh, what would be another uh, example? Uh, not enough roughage. So no, no hay um, or roughage. So not enough hay or roughage. Um, same thing. This hay and roughage um, stimulate saliva production. Uh, and we run into the same thing. So not enough hay. Uh, in roughage, we run into the same issues. Not enough saliva, far too acidic. Probably the worst thing, and we see this happen the most, hands down the most, is we get almost no hay. Or lots of grain. And we see this happen. This is probably our number one problem that we see. And this happens a lot in the show circuit. Um, as individuals are feeding animals to help get them more muscle and get them built the way that they want them to get built, they feed them almost none or very little hay and they feed them tons and tons of grain. And what that does is that drives that bacteria way down. And there's actually a term for it. They'll say that they burn out their rumen or uh, they have a, a, a burnt, um, burnt out rumen. Or you also hear people say that an animal, they cooked uh, their rumen. And what this means is essentially they drove the pH down super low for too long of a period of time and they killed those beneficial bacteria. They got a bacteria um, abnormality going on um, and it just completely burned out that rumen. And so again, we know what the rumen does. What does the rumen do? Well, 
Primarily, the rumen produces vitamin B, uh, specifically vitamin B12. These bacteria, these are the guys, again, that make B12. And without them, it's not getting made. And we know uh, that vitamin B12, we've talked about this before, vitamin B12 does what? Well, helps with um, things like red blood cell production, RBC. So red blood cells contain hemoglobin and they carry the blood throughout the system. Um, it helps with muscle development. And it helps our body to extract energy helps the body to extract energy from the food that they're eating. So imagine an animal with no B12 um, that also has effects on eyesight and things like that. So we can say eyesight. When you have don't have enough B12, imagine not enough red blood cells, not enough muscle development, inner, uh, fails to uh, create the synergistic effect needed to extract energy from food and messes up eyesight. Hey, guess what? Does this sound familiar? Eyesight and muscle development? What does that sound like? Well, we've seen that before. What is that? Polio, goat polio, sheep polio. And what's the antidote for that? We've talked about this in our videos before too. Fortified vitamin B, B12. Vitamin B is the key. It is the key to you having healthy maxed out potential with your animals, hands down, you gotta have it. And the only way to get vitamin B12, unless you are giving it to them through another source, which is never gonna be as good as these bacteria producing it on their own, the only way to get it for sure is to have a healthy rumen at the correct pH and have the bacteria to make the B12 for you. Hands down, that is the way to do it. And you will kill your animals. You will literally kill your animals time and time and time again if you choose to do one of these three things. And anyone else that tells you otherwise has no idea what they're talking about, plain and simple. Vitamin B12 is the key and it affects all the things that are going to get you where you need to go. Um, so you always, always, always have to have hay. Even if it's only a fistful of hay per day, and we've talked about this in our past videos, they got to have it. So what are some tools that we can do and that we can talk about to help us maintain this pH balance that we're looking for? Well, we've already kind of talked about some of it, but I want to talk about it again. Um, and, and again, you know, the, the number one key is we got to have clean water. Um, the number two thing is, and really these are both kind of number one, uh, you can't have one without the other. We've got to have some kind of hay or roughage. Uh, and that's just to produce saliva. Again, we're going for that saliva because we know that that saliva is what works as that buffer. And then there's something else that I want to talk about. And I want you to, to take this to heart. Um, this is something that I think if you really look into it, you're going to find that a lot of the top producers do it. It's kind of a little secret, a little trick that we don't talk about. And since you've managed to stick around for the entirety of this video, I'm going to share it with you now. So let's head out to the shop really quick and I'm going to show you our secret weapon to help deal with the pH problem. Right, so here we are, we're out in the shop and I have a bag of my mystery product here that we've been talking about. And if you haven't guessed yet what it is, this is NAHCO3, close to nacho, but not quite at nacho. Uh, this is baking soda, sodium bicarbonate. And so this is uh, a, a very strong buffering agent. Uh, the pH of this is about 8.4, so it's kind of high up there. And you can do a couple things with this. You can mix this in your feed, um, or you can just do what we do and just offer it free choice. Uh, so we have a uh, we have containers on both sides of our uh, on both sides of our farm. We have on our goat side and on our sheep side, and we just pour this out and we offer it to them free choice. So here you can actually see the little box that I've made out of uh, some landscaping 
uh, decking. Um, on one side I have my free choice mineral and on the other side I have my uh, free choice uh, baking soda. And uh, yeah, we just leave them out here and the animals come up and eat them as they need to. And baking soda is going to do three main things. Uh, well, we talked about the main thing that it's gonna do with that room and health, but with that being said, you're going to maximize your red blood cell production. You're going to maximize that animal's ability to free up that energy in its food. Better yet, you're going to stimulate that animal's appetite. For, so for those of you that are showing animals for fair and for professional shows, things like that, you may have noticed when you feed your animal a lot of grain, they kind of tend to lose their appetite. The reason for that is they're getting an upset stomach. This is going to help solve that problem. The other thing this is going to do is this is going to work miracles for your hoof health. Um, laminitis, those kind of things, really hard, tough, scaly hooves, this will help with that as well. So if there's one additional thing that I want you putting out for your animals, this is it right here. This is our sodium bicarbonate. Um, now you can buy this in bulk um, from your local feed mill, or you can just simply go to the grocery store and buy yourself a box of Arm & Hammer, open it up or a couple boxes of Arm & Hammer and dump it out um, into uh, their feed trough or into their free feed pan and just leave it. And they will eat it free choice. They'll come up, they'll nibble on it when they feel like they need some, and that is it. Um, if, you've, if you're raising lambs or raising goat kids, this is an absolute necessity. Uh, also gonna help with bloat and all kinds of other problems. So. Seeker weapon right here, baking soda. All right, so that's it for today. Hopefully you enjoyed this. Hopefully you picked up something that you didn't know about before. And hopefully you head out to the store if you're not doing so already and picking yourself up some baking soda um, and offering a free choice to your lambs and your goats. Hey, I'm Tim from Lenessa Farm Specialty in Heirloom Livestock. Thanks for joining us again today. And I look forward to seeing you again next time.